all the emails that give evidence of access for money and how Hillary Clinton herself benefited from this and how she is benefiting politically are quite extraordinary. I'm, I'm thinking of uh, where the Qatari representative was given five minutes with Bill Clinton for a million dollar uh, check um, and many other examples. Can you... Can oh, you 12 do, million from Morocco. Uh, to, 12 million from Morocco. Hillary Clinton yeah. to attend. In terms of the foreign policy of the United States, that's where, for me anyway, where the emails are most revealing, where they show the direct connection between Hillary Clinton and the foundation of jihadism of ISIL in in the Middle East. Can you talk something about that? What the how the emails demonstrate this connection between those who are meant to be fighting the jihadists ISIL are actually those who uh, have helped create it. There's a early 2014 email from Hillary Clinton, so not so long after she left Secretary of State, to her campaign manager, John Podesta. Mm. Uh, that email, it states uh, that ISIL, ISIS, is uh, funded by Saudi Arabia and Qatar, mm. the governments of Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Now, th this is a, I actually, I think this is the most significant email in the whole collection. Mm. Uh, and perhaps because Saudi and Qatari money is spread um, all over the place, inclu including into many media institutions. All serious analysts know, uh, even the US government uh, has mentioned or, or agreed with that some Saudi figures have been supporting ISIS, funding ISIS. Mm -hmm. But the dodge has always been that's uh, what well, it's just some rogue princes mm -hmm. using their cut of the oil money to mm -hmm. do whatever they like, but actually the government disapproves. But that email says that no, it is the governments of Saudi and the government uh, mm. and Qatar uh, that have been funding ISIS. The Saudis, the Qataris, the Moroccans, the Bahrainis, particularly the Saudis and the Qataris, are giving all this money to the Clinton Foundation uh, while Hillary Clinton is Secretary of, of State and the State Department is approving massive arms sales, particularly to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Un un under Hillary Clinton, uh, and our Clinton emails uh, reveal uh, a significant discussion about it, um, the largest ever arms deal in the world was made with Saudi Arabia, more than $80 billion. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, during her tenure as Secretary of State, total arms uh, exports from the United States in, in terms of the dollar value doubled. Doubled. And, and of course, the consequence of that is that this notorious terrorist jihadist group called ISIL or ISIS uh, is created largely with money from the very people who are giving money to the Clinton Foundation. Yes. That's extraordinary. Look, Hillary Clinton's just a person. Uh, I actually feel quite sorry for Hillary Clinton as a person uh, because I see someone who is um, eaten alive uh, by their ambitions, Tor tormented, uh, literally to the point uh, uh, where they they become sick, you know, they faint as a result of going on and going on with their ambitions. But she represents a whole network of people uh, and a network of relationships also with particular states. The question is, how does Hillary Clinton fit in this broader network? Well, she's a, a centralizing cog, so that you've got a lot of different gears in operation uh, from the big banks like Goldman Sachs and, and major elements of Wall Street and intelligence and people in the State Department and the Saudis and so on. Uh, she's the, if you like, the centralizer that 
interconnects all these different cogs. She's, sm she's a, a smooth central representation of all that. And all that is more or less uh, what is in power now in the United States. It's what you would call the establishment or the, the DC consensus and its influences. Um, in fact, one of the more significant Podesta emails uh, that we released was about how the Obama cabinet was formed. And, and half of the Obama cabinet was basically nominated by a representative from Citibank. Well, it is quite, quite amazing. Didn't Citibank supply a list, which, yes. which turned out to be most turned out to be, to be most the Obama cabinet. Yes. So Wall Street decides the cabinet of the president of the United States. But if you were following the Obama came, campaign back then closely, you could see uh, it had become very close uh, to banking interests. It wasn't so close to oil interests, but it was very close to banking interests. Yeah, yeah. So I think you can't under, properly understand Hillary Clinton's foreign policy without understanding Saudi Arabia. The connections with Saudi Arabia are so intimate. Why was she so demonstrably enthusiastic about the destruction of Libya? Can you talk a little about just what the emails have told us, told you, about what happened there, because Libya is such a source for so much of the mayhem now in Syria, the ISIL jihadism and so on. And it was almost Hillary Clinton's invasion. What, what do the emails tell us about that? Libya, more than anyone else's war, was Hillary Clinton's war. Uh, Barack Obama initially opposed it. Mm. Who was the person who was championing it? Hillary Clinton. That's documented uh, throughout uh, her emails. Uh, she had, she put her, her favoured agent in effect, Sidney Blumenthal, uh, onto that. Uh, there's more than 1700 emails out of the 33,000 Hillary Clinton emails we published just about Libya. It's not about that Libya has cheap oil. She perceived the um, the removal of Gaddafi uh, and the overthrow of the Libyan state, something that she would use to run in the general election for president. So late 2011, there's <clears throat> an internal document called the, Li the Libya TikTok uh, mm -hmm. that is produced for Hillary Clinton. Uh, and it's all the it's a chronological description of how Hillary Clinton was the central figure in the destruction of the Libyan state. Uh, as a result, um, uh, there was around uh, 40,000 deaths uh, within Libya. Jihadists moved in, ISIS moved in. That led to the European refugee and migrant crisis because not only did you have people fleeing Libya, people then fleeing Syria, uh, destabilization of other African countries as a result of arms flows. The Libyan state itself uh, was no longer able to control movement of people through it. Uh, so um, the Mediterranean, Libya faces onto the Mediterranean. And so it had been effectively the cork in the bottle of Africa. So all problems, economic problems, civil war in Africa, Previously, people fleeing those problems didn't end up in Europe because Libya policed uh, the Mediterranean. And that was said explicitly at the time, uh, back in early 2011 by Gaddafi. What do these Europeans think that they, they're doing trying to um, bomb and destroy the Libyan state? There's going to be uh, floods uh, of migrants out of Africa and jihadists into Europe, and that is exactly what happened. 